Awesome. Well, listen, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. It is an absolute pleasure. So let's just dive in with this really simple one. How are you doing at the moment? Sure. Pretty good. Can't complain too much. Uh, got a little cat emergency going on at home, so that's a little nerve wracking, but he's all right. He's all good. Got some cat surgery yesterday and uh, he's going to get picked up either later today or tomorrow. So things are cool, but a little hectic for a moment. Absolutely, man. Uh, I have two cats myself, and um, yeah, they can uh, they can they can be nightmares. But yeah, of course, when uh, oh, when yeah. these emergencies happen. Yep, yep, yep. But all's well. So other than that, no complaints whatsoever. Things are good. Uh, just confirmed some stuff for Europe, so I'm excited for that to finally be in fruition and uh, get announced eventually. I'm not sure when that's allowed to be talked about, actually. But you know, just by coincidence today, that happens. So that that's cool. That is very, very cool. Call it coincidence as well. Uh, and, you know, Oasis announced a return today. If you've got Europe yep. coming along as well, who knows? Maybe you'll end up sharing a bill, right? I can't talk about it too much. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, alongside that, then, the overall feeling of Molder right now, would you say you're all in a very positive place? Yeah, definitely. I mean, with the upcoming release of the new record and just all these things that are kind of, I guess, I wouldn't say falling into our lap, but somewhat, you know, just... We're definitely very, I guess, just elated. You know, I couldn't be happier with uh, the response we've gotten so far with the single. The shows that we just did with Goetia were kick-ass. We have Hawaii coming up. There's a lot of cool stuff in the works. So everyone's definitely, I guess, eager, positive, and uh, ready to get shit going. Like, Well, the expectation is, as we're building to the release of a new record, is that you kind of would sit back and relax, aside from doing all the stuff related to releasing a record, like your singles and your promotion and all of that. But obviously, as you said yourself, you were out on the road at the beginning of August. Um, satisfied with that tour? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it was just a run we wanted to do with this new up-and-coming band, Goetia. We did a, a show with them last fall when we did our run with Fulci. And I just thought they kicked ass. And I was like, dude, we, we got to do something. So we ended up putting together this Midwest to Northeast, East Coast run with them. And it was just kind of a way to stay in the public eye, stay relevant. Um last album came out about two years ago so it's just like we don't have anything to push at the moment we have things in the works so it's kind of like a big hype to be like all right let's drop a single go on the road promote this new record and hopefully get some attention and get on something bigger as far as once the album's actually released still plenty of time for that as well um it's crazy is really because the past few years it has been felt like a bit of a whirlwind for Mulder to some degree. Uh, obviously, the latter part of 2024 isn't changing that with the release of a brand new album. Have Does that does it feel like a bit of a whirlwind for you? Uh, I don't know if I'd say it feels like a whirlwind, but I mean, time it does fly. And like, as anybody will tell you, the older you get, the faster it goes. And uh, just between juggling work, doing the touring, going to tons of shows and just, I guess, being active in the scene, just generally speaking. Um, yeah, I guess I just don't find myself with as much time as I I think I have, you know, like at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, shit, you know, I work from home. I can get what I need to done then I can go to the gym and I can play guitar. I can go to the show, but I end up only being able to do maybe one of those things. And, you know, it just comes with the territory of getting older you know, slowing down in life and whatever. But yeah, that's really it. It's just being like, holy shit, that was already a year ago. And mm. wow, that feels like that just happened. And, you know, just in a blink of an eye, a year passes by, you know, like I, it feels like we just finished recording the album and it's about to come out. And, you know, I want to say a few months, but it's going to feel like a few weeks. So for sure, you know. Uh, I completely understand where you're coming from. Also, particularly if you are, and it sounds like you might be a person that likes to stay busy. Yeah. Definitely, like uh, having downtime's cool and all, but like that's the thing. I just I I want to utilize the time that I do have and not regret not using it. Well, of course, we are talking about catastrophic reconfiguration out November eighth via Prosthetic Records. Um, if you can sum up what this album says about Molder as you stand in twenty twenty four. Um, I don't really know how to phrase it without i guess sounding pompous but that is just like we're fucking molder and this is what we do and what we've always done and we're not going to stray away from it it may not be the whole low and slow uh maggot stomp thing it may not be the the techie more like i don't want to call it nerdy but like nerdy side of metal it's not very progressive it's it's just 
classic to the point no frills no trends no reinventing the wheel type of music it's just shit that i'm just proud to play and proud to hear back and uh that's really it it's just um another continuation of us you know you can expect it to i suppose be more refined we're obviously getting older doing more shows just practicing more so i feel like our playing is just inevitably going to get better through time but i don't think that's like a a particular goal of ours like we just kind of write our style and it just comes out sounding like us i don't think we mm. uh, yearn to like add more elements to the band or i don't know i don't i don't want i don't like change you know i like the consistency of the bands that i like and I'd, I'd like to follow in those footsteps for sure so just really that just expect more of the same but better better production better songwriting better performance and that's the goal from this point onward with anything we do. Okay. So you, it's record writing time, right? We've got to go back a little bit here. It's record writing time. You know you have to follow up a very strong previous release. Uh, you've obviously learned quite a bit through touring and playing and just time, as you're saying, getting older. What is that mindset early on? Did you have a vision, a clear idea of, look, this is what we want to do with this record? Yes and no. Uh, like, again, it was definitely in my head to all right uh this is our third record and with a lot of the bands that i enjoy from like classic era even newer bands that seems to be the band killer you know it's mm. that's where you know it either makes the band super super it just makes them stray in a, a path that i'm never fortunately into it they either get way way good at their instruments and like lose their nastiness or they like dumb it down further and it, I don't know like I, I'm very particular about like I guess the music that I am into so again it's just trying to follow in the footsteps of shit like that to just make myself happy with it and myself happy with playing it but yeah I just wanted to make sure that this album if it was our last for any particular reason um, it's like it's I'm gonna be cool with it I'm not gonna feel like oh fuck we should have done another record or oh man i really wish we did this differently that was really the point with any record or any music that i try and record is like if mm. this is the last thing i do like i want to be able to say i'm okay with it because you just never know shit happens and again you know not like i'm anticipating it to end or anything but i just always want to give everything 100 percent, give it my all and like anything else just if it's the last thing i do i want to make sure that it makes an impact and that it was worth my time you know what i mean no, absolutely. I do know what you mean. It's a mindset that sounds like you're coming from a negative place where, oh, the band might end tomorrow, but it actually comes from a positive place because, as you say, you're throwing 100% into it for the possibility yeah. of who knows what the next day holds. Exactly. It's like, without sounding negative, every goal that I could have possibly imagined this band uh, for me has been reached and then some. So everything beyond this is just like extra which is incredible. It's great, but it's just, it's an unexpected. So it really is just kind of like, Hey, this is cool. And I'm just going to keep rolling with the punches. But like the things that I set out to do, I was fortunately like able to do yeah. and not to, that there's like nowhere forward from here, but like, you know, my particular specific goals have been met. So like all of this now is just secondary and, and I don't want to make it sound like it's not as important but it is just like all right cool i didn't think that this would be an option this wasn't something i thought about awesome let's do that like as opposed to okay we need to work really really hard so we can get to where i want to be and we fortunately did that as a band for sure so i'm elated ecstatic to where we are right now and um i look forward to what we have coming up Oh, it's fantastic to hear that you are in such a such a comfortable position. I think it's the word I want to use, comfortable position, to be able to look at the record from this perspective and the future as well. Because, you know, you're a band that enjoys the road a lot uh, based on the oh, last few years. But did that create a bit of an issue when it came to even create, like writing this record? Uh, definitely. It just, again, time, you know. Once we got busy, busy with trying to promote the last record, we were just out and about. And then when we weren't out and about, we had to work a lot to make our money back and just, you know, stay afloat financially. So the free time we did have to practice in those moments, we're like preparing set lists for our live show, as opposed to here's, you know, a slew of new songs that I wrote or that anyone else has to bring to the table. So it got to a point after 
that Fulci run, we had like two songs written that we had started like flirting with playing like intros of live on that last tour. Uh, but it, it really became a point where I was like, hey, guys, like we do have a contractual obligation to have this album out by this date. And they're being very nice and giving us leeway with it. But I don't want to like, you know, step further or, or, or than I need to. So like, let's get this shit moving. And uh, as much as it's like a collaborative effort in the band, like it is my baby and it is the most of the writing is done by me. So that was on me. It really did come down to like, all right, I need to get my shit together, sit down and like actually write and get stuff going. But sometimes if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. When inspiration strikes, it does. And fortunately it did. And we ended up writing this record. I wouldn't say super fast, but in the course of like two to three months, yeah, we wrote, recorded it. And I think it's honestly our best record yet. I know that's like the cliche shit to say when you have a new thing that you got to promote and whatever, awesome. you know, I'll let the people decide that, but I don't know. I genuinely do think it's literally still molder. There's nothing about it. that's like, Oh wow. They, they went this route. It's just the same shit, but better shorter songs, more to the point, more refined. Um, yeah. Do you, did you, do you, do you think, do you think that came about because you effectively put more pressure on yourself to do this in a quicker amount of time? No. So why engrossed in decay is like 47 fucking minutes is because <laughs> we got the initial contract deal with prosthetic. It seemed pretty clear that we wouldn't get paid unless it was over a certain amount of time for, you know, the, the royalties for the entire record or whatever. It, it, it was worded weirdly. And I'm not sure if I still understand it, but at this point, I made it very clear to them, like, we're a 30-minute album band. Like, mm. Vanished Covers is a, like a 30-minute record. It smokes. There's no moments on there where I feel like it needs to be cut down. Engrossed has tons of shit on there that I would have trimmed the fat on because that's how they were originally written. Most of the things on some of those songs are just doubled up for the sake of we need an extra 30 seconds on, like, each song to fulfill this obligation. And I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to cop out and be lazy about it, but I also didn't want to like just force a bunch of shit into the song that didn't fit in there just to say like, all right, well, we changed the riff. So like we just, I guess, played around with stuff uh, a little bit longer than I like to riff wise. Usually I like to keep things pretty short to the point. A lot of stuff I don't even really like repeating mm. and just a lot of that, you know, re repetitions I would have not put in there if not for that contract. So when it came time to do this record, I was just like, hey, so let's let's renegotiate. Let's talk about where where we're at, you know, what we're happy with, dissatisfied with, et cetera. And that was like the major thing was I didn't want to feel forced to make the music longer than it should be, because that was like one of the like, I guess, shining negative reviews from Engrossed. You know, obviously it did very well and it was. Yeah. It, positively received but a lot of the negative complaints were just like yeah maybe it could have been shorter and i don't disagree like at all if i'm being sincere um and that's not to say i'm not proud of the songs you know we we play the ones in particular live that were written the way that they are on the album uh and how they were supposed to be i try and avoid playing the other shit just because again it's just it just bums me out, you know, yep. knowing that like, oh, this song could have been a two and a half minute ripper and instead it's like four and a half fucking minutes. And not that it's a bad song, but it just didn't need to be this long. And that's my biggest pet peeve with any band. Seeing them live, listening to them on a record is just if it's long and it works like kick ass. But a lot of the time I find myself preferring the less is more approach. You know, I, I want to be left hungry. I want to come back and see the band. I want to go to the table and talk to them and be like, what the fuck was that? Let me get a CD. Like, I don't want to feel like they've overstayed their welcome. And I don't want my band to be that band for anybody else either. That's why even when we headline, we typically play like 30 minutes. If people really, really want more, we'll give it to them. But it's like, <laughs> to Tuesday night, it's 11 o'clock. Like, let's get this shit wrapped up. You know, we'll, we'll give it all. But you know, I do make it a point to just play the the goods, as they say, you know. I get what you're saying. Uh, it, it's genre specific as well. As you say, you know, I'm listening. If I'm going to watch stream theater, I'm expecting a two, three hour mm -hmm. show, so to speak. You know, if I'm hearing some nasty death metal, it's going to be short, sharp and painful. Sure. And that's the thing. It's like people aren't necessarily familiar with us. Like, I, I guess you could argue we're a bigger band. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying we're not like definitely we we have exposure. We've done a lot of cool shit. But like a lot of the festivals that we're a part of, we're usually like on the small stage. A lot of the tours that we end up doing are just with our friends or like, you know, we're we're not like a big hype band right now. So I can't expect people to want to sit through any more than 20, 30 minutes of a band that they've never even fucking heard. And, you know, I'm grateful that they're checking it out at all. But that's that's the trick. You know, that's the magic for sure is like if they like it, then you hook them. And if they don't like it then they're not as pissed off as they would have been if you played for another 30 fucking minutes. That's just where I'm at with it. No, I think I'm in total agreement. I don't care the size. I saw their side play at Bloodstock a couple of weeks back and 20 minutes in, I'm thinking, right, wrap this up. This has been nasty enough. Yep. Sometimes that's all all you need. And uh, that's the thing. I just don't want to be the band that people are like, come on, like, let's wrap this up, you know? So... So is it fair to say overall the writing experience for the new album was fun, was quite creatively stimulating for you? Yeah, it was definitely cool because we got Carlos in the band now. Dominic's been stepping up a lot harder as far as just throwing in bass runs and like coming up with riffs and Kyle especially too, just getting more practice and being able to do these tours. Everyone's just kind of stepped up their game musically. And like, I don't want that to scare people because again, we're, we're not, we're not like human death now or anything like it's Mm -hmm. still very much so just old school proto death thrash whatever you want to call it but uh yeah it's just tighter more refined more like efficient um better just songwriting more to the point like i don't know i think everyone just kind of really clicked and knew what the mission was with this album and like i said was just creating like the quintessential molder record Do you have a specific uh, memory from that period, say the writing or recording period, that just stands out because it was particularly fun or really exciting for you? Um, Honestly, just tracking drums when we like actually had everything ready to go. Um, I was nervous going into it. We went into like a super comfortable environment. We went with one of our friends and we just did it in their basement and Kyle just fucking killed it. Like every single song was like a fucking single take and it was perfect. Nothing had to be edited or fixed or added. Like it legit was just like, okay, my doubts are gone. Like that's all we need. This is the backbone of the record. And if that's fucking perfect, then the rest will fucking come with it. But uh, yeah, that, that for me was the turning point of being like, all right, you know, like anytime I write anything, just any insecurity obviously is going to be on the forefront when you're being put under the microscope like that. So it is just like, are people going to like this? Mm. And hearing the tracks back with the scratch track was like, oh, fuck it. Like, this is a rip an album. Uh, if I didn't write this, I would listen to it. And again, wow. that's a major thing for me is just, I I don't like listening to myself talk or perform or watching videos of me or whatever. It's just, it's weird. Mm-hmm. So um, I get to write music that I do want to listen back. Like that excites me. It makes me very happy for sure. Cause it's, you know, the one thing that's separate from being again, just like, oh, fuck this. I don't feel comfortable, you know, <laughs> watching myself, hearing myself, seeing myself, whatever. It's rare as hell that you, that you can, you know, you can still enjoy that, particularly, I'd say, at this stage, because you are, well, what, well, about two months away from the release of the album, roughly, so to speak. Um, and you could be in the mindset we are almost sick of it. Like, you've, you've listened to it so many times over and over again. We just, we wrote and recorded it so quickly, and, like, everyone was just, again, just on the same page that we didn't really have to overplay anything. Mm-hmm. Like, especially when it came to recording, like I said, like, all the drums were done so fucking fast. And that's usually something that would take us, you know, a few days, if not a couple of weekends or whatever, like everybody got their shit done in a matter of like three to four hours. And that's including setup, tear down, doing all their tracks. And again, I don't want that to scare people and be like, wow, they didn't take any time on this record, but it really did just like work out perfectly. And so smoothly, like I could not be happier with the fact that, uh, we didn't have to waste a bunch of time. We didn't have to overplay the record and get ear fatigued on it and hate it before it's even out. Cause kind of how engrossed was the mix process like took much longer. We did a lot more just like, how's this one? How's this one? How's this one? And I just, you know, when you listen to a 50 minute record over and over and over and over and over and over, it, it does just start to just fucking wear on you. This one's nice and to the point. 
it has a really good flow which i'm super stoked on like it seems to seamlessly just go through the album and like i don't want to say it sounds like one long song per se but for me i think we finally have this record where it's like the first metal church or bonded by blood or like it's just again a quintessential record where every single fucking song on it is worth listening to and next thing you know it's over and you want to listen to it again like as opposed to again being midway through it and being like man this thing should uh, be done by now and uh, i got five more tracks or whatever i i don't know i find myself listening to the mixes and being like oh shit the record's done already that's a good sign to me I 100% agree that replay value cannot be understated, particularly these days when everything is so quick and fast and anybody, everybody just wants singles and things like that. So it yeah, works yeah. really, really yeah. well with that. So the response to the single, these obviously uh, title tracks out already, has been pretty, pretty uh, strong. Um, do you pay attention to that side of things, the social media conversations about you people talking and offering comments do you pay much attention to that i mean i know i shouldn't but of course i do i mean again it's 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 my baby i've, I've literally built this thing from the ground up so to say so i am super intrigued to st- just get other people's i guess perceptions and response on it sometimes it's spot on and super accurate sometimes it's just out of left field and completely wrong sometimes it's super <laughs> funny like i don't know it's it never actually bothers me per se but like i don't know dude haters are my motivators as, as yeah. they say whatever you know like i i don't want to get too comfortable and everybody like it and it become a commodity like again i like that molder didn't just pop and become this overnight sensation and that we've naturally organically built like a following and have just done the thing without i guess just having like 15 seconds of fame I don't know. Um, I've seen a lot of bands in the last 15, 10 years just kind of come and go. They had their big pop and their big moment of popularity or whatever, and then they're just kind of forgotten about. And oh, I, yeah. I just didn't do that whatsoever at any point in time. I'd rather just have like my mid-sized consistent following forever as opposed to just being a flavor of the week or whatever. And it's never on the plate more of success because it's not just in America, it's widespread around the world, as you say, crossing into Europe and the UK and other countries as well, which uh, is, is, is a great sign of success. It's an incredible achievement to be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I don't know. Um, this is the first time we've done anything uh, released to the public that doesn't have like a single negative thing said about it. And I find that endearing, but I also find it super fucking weird. You know, I, it's kind of suspicious. Like, I, 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 you know, we're 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 doing it better, so to say, but it's still the same band. Nothing's really changed at all about it. Like vocals are the same, styles the same, maybe some more solos, but like other than that, it, it's just weird to see such positive response. I'm I'm used to shit I do getting kind of shit on, and that's why I say like you know haters are my motivators it really is just like all right all right motherfucker like you think this and that like well we'll see you know and it, it is just kind of like again motivation to just strive to do my best and keep doing what i'm doing and like i don't know like there's a local band from here they're called cyanide i'm not sure yeah. if you're familiar with them or not but like when they first came around they were like fucking hated by everybody and everyone thought they sucked and if you look at their band now you would think completely otherwise because like 30 40 years later they're like near and endeared to like chicago everybody loves them you go on any of their comments of anything it's just all like worship and respect for this band but what i think is cool about it is they just always did them they never changed like ever every record is consistently just fucking cyanide it might change like a little bit like one might be faster or slower or whatever but like it's always their thing and I totally respect the fact that they never strayed away from that to try and like run with the times or be popular. Yeah. What what pay trading or fanzines or whatever bullshit was happening at the time. They just said, I don't fucking care. This is what we're going to do. And they just literally stuck with it for 30 fucking years. They never toured. They never had to do any of that shit. They just traded, stayed true, did their thing. And like, they have such a like a longevity as a band just like mm. i don't know people still to this day are buying all of their shit their stuff sells out in an instant and when they get announced on shows or festivals it's a crazy pop like and it's all just from 
persevering and like continuing to just do their thing and lead with their vision instead of letting other shit affect that. So that's like a, a major influence on the yeah. way that I like want to run this band and want to see this band in the future or whatever. I mean, it is fantastic to hear that. Um, and your positivity around this record shines through. Uh, but of course, obviously success, you know, is measured in such different ways these days anyway. So I'm going to ask you to, Think about this. Uh, what for you, looking at the record, the album has been out for a while, Cast Up Reconfiguration has been out for a while. What would success for it look like to you, do you think? Um, I mean, I hate to just set the bar solo, but like just to do as well at the very least as the last two records. Um, Fair enough. I'd like to see it sell out and have a second press on vinyl. I'd love to see the label maybe push this one a little bit harder. You know, nothing on them, but they have a billion bands and they can only do so much. So that's why I felt it was really important for us to go on the road and be visible and like push it ourselves. Cause I personally don't want to just pay some PR company to blow smoke up everyone's ass and pretend like we're the next big thing. Cause that shit's lame to me. I don't think that's cool. And uh, I don't respect that as much as uh, that's a big part of the industry and how things work. It's just it's not for me. And if that ends up, you know, biting me in the ass or our band in the ass, I think that's okay. Mm. <laughs> you no, know, like I, I'd rather die on that hill than again, be the band that's paying for likes or paying for exposure. I'd rather the music do the talking and people want to talk to us and want to listen to us and want to be interested naturally, you know. November 8th, 2024 by Prostate Records. Not too long now. Uh, before you go, Aaron, this is Ozzy Osbourne. And in his head are random cards of everything and everything, including uh, lots of submissions by other bands and artists as well that we've spoken to over the years. Just going to pull some out of random if you don't mind answering a few questions. You got it. Okay. All right. What does the word comfort mean to you? Comfort? Mm. Um, I would say discomfort. You know, I, again, I like to stay busy. I like to be under the gun. I like to be, I, I'm just an anxious dude, no matter what. And I'd rather have a reason to be anxious than to just be sitting there and have anxiety tapping my foot with for nothing. So it's like the more I keep myself busy, uh, the better it is just for me, my psyche, my mental health, just everything. Just um, if I'm not doing things, I, I, I'm not, I'm just not doing period so discomfort for sure is a comforting thing for me just knowing that i have shit going on i have things to worry about and to care about yeah uh, lethargic's weird and uh it's not a cool state of mind to be in so knowing that i'm not there is excellent you know fair enough okay then what is a bad piece of advice you have received a bad piece of advice mm. i have received um I guess just kind of like what we just touched on of uh, people trying to tell me that I should like pay for like a manager or an agent right. or um, a PR guy or just some clown on Instagram that fucking pays for likes. Like, again, everyone has their platform and I'm not trying to be an absolute asshole and diminish that for anybody. But, you know, like I, I like this kind of stuff, a natural interview that we were emailed about, like it wasn't like a a weird hey so if you want exposure from this guy you know here's you got to cut him a check for this and then it'll run for this it's just i don't think that shit's worth it it's like i don't care if metal injections posting about my band i don't care if blabbermouth is posting about my band i have always just been in into the underground period and that's why it's kind of weird to say that we're even on prosthetic or uh in a, a i guess platform where we're doing some of the shit that we're able to do because yeah. I, we're a basement band. We're very just DIY, punk, like motivated. Everything we've done has just been made by hand. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's weird being in a position where we're like, I don't know, working with the devil, so to say. <laughs> like, you know, working with the man. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. It's discomforting. It's cool. You know, I'm fucking, but that's the thing. It's just just trying to maintain our integrity and do things the way that we want to do them. Um, and that's really it. So the bad advice aspect, I guess, just to sum it up, not tail too far off, is just uh, being told that we should pay for exposure in any light, whatever that means to anybody. But yeah, yeah I think that's a dumb thing to do. 
Well said. Uh, don't disagree. Okay, uh, the dead have risen. Your only weapon is what is around you right now. What are you grabbing? I guess my guitar. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna take a few out at least. Yeah, it was it was gonna say it's probably the the biggest bluntest object I have around. <laughs> Yeah, it'll go eventually, but you know, it'll it'll serve me well for a little bit. It'll give you some breathing space. All right, what was the last TV show you binge watched? Uh, I just rewatched Seinfeld again. That's like Ooh. an annual thing for me. Love it, you know. Um, other than that, uh, I just watched that '90s show. It's fucking terrible, but I watched the entire thing. I don't know why. Very, uh, very brain rot material, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I liked that '70s show a lot. <laughs> I thought I'd give it a go, and I just kind of forced myself through it to be like, maybe this will get better. Maybe this will get better. Maybe this next episode it'll develop and they'll figure out their shit. But it just—it's not great. Yeah, we've all been there. We do it each episode. It'll get better. I'm sure it'll get better, yeah. and it just never does. Yeah. Okay. Do you believe life exists out there and out there like space? uh like aliens yeah yeah i mean i don't see why yeah. not I, I think that's totally plausible if we can exist why can't something else you know okay yeah no, I, it's it is it's say totally plausible yeah why, why are you um okay and last but not least what is an achievement you were quite proud of uh being People. a part of maryland death fest uh this this year uh that was the big goal for me when i started the band well i spoke earlier on like hitting those goals and now it's kind of just like now what you know but i really didn't think we'd ever have that chance to do it um we were told when we signed to the label that we were with that they're not very cool with the fest and then it, it complicates working with them so that was like a, oh shit my uh my biggest goal might have just been fucked up by uh, achieving this other big goal you know what i mean but um yeah, it was cool to be able to get signed for sure. But again, that shit doesn't really matter to me. As long as people like will buy my handmade tapes or CDs or whatever, like that's just as cool to me. But playing that festival in any capacity, I think is a lot of people's like, you know, destination point as far as being in an extreme music band in the last 20 years. And it definitely was that for me. So Maryland Death Fest for sure. It's iconic. It really, really is. Um, you know, as a person from the UK, don't get to travel that much. But, if, you know, if there's a destination that's still on the bucket list for me personally, it's there. Dude, you got to do it. I've gone several years since I was a, a young lad. And uh, it's the fucking best festival as far as the US goes. I can't speak on Europe. I haven't been. But US, Maryland Death Fest all day. Well, fingers crossed the future uh, over the next couple of years looks super, super bright and that we get you over to some of ours, not just in Europe, but also the UK, the Bloodstocks, the Downloads, the Watkins, uh, wherever we can get you on, fingers crossed. But for now, November 8th, of course, the brand new album, Catastrophic Reconfiguration. Uh, Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Certainly. Thank you for rescheduling and I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Seriously. Uh, you have a great day, man.